Aloha, and welcome to the Badass Warrior Woman series. Today's story is about the widow of Zarephath. So what do you do when you have nothing left? She's a good example of what we should be doing, and what she, we can learn from her. So let's get started. When you have nothing left, it's an opportunity to watch Christ supply your needs. Today's story comes from 1 Kings uh, 17, 8 through 24. You can go to the website and read the full story about it, and um, you can also get the questions and do get a new perspective on there. The widow is one of the many unnamed women of the Bible, but her story strikes home with many of us. By the way, you can sign up for the newsletter to get these stories in your email if you're interested. You can click on that link down below and you'll get sent it out every Tuesday for our Take Charge Tuesday newsletter. So before we start talking about the widow, let's talk about Elijah. Elijah was in trouble. He took on powerful people. With God's power, he caused a drought in the land that lasted for three years. This caused a famine. It also made him a target to a lot of people, and especially to Jezebel. So while he was hiding out, God protected Elijah by having him hide by a, a brook, and he sent ravens to bring him meat and bread twice a day. And then, after a period of time, he sent Elijah to Zarephath. That's where we first see Elijah and the widow meet with one another. She had nothing left, absolutely nothing left with this famine going on. She had enough flour and oil to make one more meal for her and her son. After that, she said, we'll eat the last of the food and then die. Now, we know her boy was young, young enough to be carried, because we see that later in the story. And all mamas know we'd do anything to feed our child. So this was a really big deal for her. Wait do you see what happens. Elijah came to her and said, hey, I need you to make me a loaf of bread and uh, give it to me first and then go back and make one for you and your son. Now, she'd heard of Elijah and heard about his God. She trusted him and believe it or not, this woman went back and made a loaf of bread for Elijah and Elijah ate. She knew nothing else was going to happen. She, she didn't know any of the promises that were about to come forward to her. But God blessed her obedience. When she returned to her supplies, she was amazed to find that the flour and the oil never ran out. Can you imagine that every time you scoop in to get some more, it's exactly the same amount? No matter how often she made the bread, the containers remained full. How's that for being obedient and being rewarded? But as time went on, there was a second tragedy that struck. Her son became ill. In fact, so ill, he died. The widow was heartbroken. She questioned herself, thinking she brought on her son's illness because of her own sin. You know, if you think about it, what mom hasn't wondered, what did I do wrong? What am I not confessing that I need to be confessing? She was heartbroken. When Elijah came into the room and saw, saw her um, great pain, he picked the child up and carried him to his room and asked God to heal him. And the good news is God answered. He carried her son back down the stairs and said, he lives. You know, so often we doubt, so we miss out on things. How often do we doubt that God can supply our needs? We have promises that give us the assurance that what we see as painting ourselves into a corner is actually an opportunity for him to supply our needs in a way that only he can supply. And I think he does that so that we know this gift came strictly from him. God gives us promises. In Philippians 4, 5 through 7, it says the Lord is near and to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I actually have memorized this one, and I use it any time that I am anxious about anything. And I, I can say it back to God and say, you promised. And so here are the things you promised. And God can't be a liar to his own word. So I have memorized this verse and used it many, many times. I'm sure there's times up there where he's like, there goes Pam again. John 15:7 says, 
If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. That's another one that I check my heart, make sure that my requests are right requests and in line with God's word. And then I ask for those things. And I can't, can't tell you how many times that uh, God has answered those prayers specifically, exactly, just in the nick of time when I needed them. So let's ask ourselves, what keeps you from an abundant living? Is there something or some situation that you know isn't positive for you and you hang on to it? Do you think God doesn't hear your request? I think a lot of times a lot of us might think that. Are you not asking for blessings? You know, we are allowed to be, as, as kids of the kingdom, we're allowed to ask for blessings. Do you give the enemy too much power? Do you waller in your pain? Do you say, oh, this is never going to happen for me? Uh, things never go right in my life. These things might happen to you, but not to me. That's giving the enemy way too much power. So what I'm suggesting to you today and with this entire Warrior Woman series is to pick up your sword and fight. If something's holding you back, get rid of it. Name it. Confess it. Put it in your past. Do whatever you have to do to get it in your past. When you think God doesn't hear you, I hate to say this to you. It sounds rude, but get over yourself. He hears everything, even the stuff we think we can hide. So tell him, then ask for a solution and a blessing. He said you can, so hold him to it. There's so many times that I've had something going on that I just look, say, look, Lord, and I try not to be arrogant about this, but in prayer I can say, you're the landlord of my life. You got a problem. I'm going to sit back and watch you solve it. Stop giving away your power. God can direct ships that are moving, not standing still. Did you notice that God asked the widow to obey? He didn't give her the food before she obeyed. She needed the food to survive, and then once she obeyed, she was given an endless supply. Too often I meet women who want things to fall into their laps or depend on others for their happiness. So ask for what you want with a right request and expect it. Act as if the request has already been granted and start moving forward. I'm suggesting to you today that you embrace the warrior within you. The Warrior Woman series comes out once a week. The Modern Woman's Life magazine believes that every woman has a warrior within them. Our hope is to equip you to find the strength to be all you're intended to be. Be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter to get these strategies in your email and remind yourself, warrior women aren't always perfect, but are always engaged in the battle. You're going to be engaged anyway. You might as well be moving towards a successful win. We'd love to hear from you on how we can continue to get better. And above all, remember, you've got this. You can rock it. I'm Pam Vincent from The Modern Woman's Life, and I'll catch you next week. Aloha.